Morning show is on in an hour, and we're having a little group meeting first. This is a lot of NOAA people and NOAA teacher at sea people. There's Bob, he's the boss. So, um, anyway, lots of blue shirts around here. It's a great color to be swimming in blue. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, good morning. Hi, I'm Hi. Chris. There's Liz, she's a little broken. <laughs> so I'm, we're very happy uh, to the Teacher at Sea program, and all of you know Jennifer Hammond, and where's Liz McMahon, and the coordinator of all the Teacher at Sea alumni, Elizabeth Bullock, where is she hiding? Okay, back there. And so there's the NOAA booth. It's all set up, ready to go. We have about 15 minutes until they allow the other people in, but it looks much better. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. And... Um, our great Noah sign. There's Jillian. I'm going to be working with her today. And we'll just take a short walk around and see everything is all set up. And people are getting things ready. There's water fountains and fancy computers. Gloves. Carolina's all these really fun because they have labs that they do with teachers. They have lab decks set up. Microscopes and just everything around here. Things of fetal pigs. And hearts. We eat our heart though. Wouldn't be eating that heart. It's kind of gross. Noah is right next to the smart board people, so maybe I'll learn something new that's kind of smart. Sure. So we set up here as a model of indoor air quality in a classroom. There's two hamsters on this side, and there's one on this side. And the size of the container and the size of the opening are regulation. And what we can do is test the carbon dioxide in each side and predict and see what the carbon dioxide levels would be with one animal versus two animal or one animal versus two or 15 students or 30 students. Wow, do you ever put a green plant in there? Well, we haven't yet. This is the first year we've awesome. done this experiment. Gas tech detector tube, mm -hmm. gas detector tube. And what we're gonna do is, this is a carbon dioxide tube packed with a chemical that will react in the presence of carbon dioxide. So we can not only uh, determine the, that there is or isn't carbon dioxide in uh, the container, but also the concentration. So mm -hmm. we're able to do, kids are able to collect data that they, they can actually um, analyze and, and make graphs out of. So we're going to put a little... We are going to take a reading of the carbon dioxide level inside of this chamber. And students at home, which one do you think should have more carbon dioxide? One with two hamsters or one? Make your prediction. What you see are the levels are um, significantly higher than they should be. This is where they should be, and this is where they are. So they're three times higher than they should be. Wow. So now let's see what happens on the other side. The other little hamster's out and happy, too. <laughs> So maybe would you predict more carbon dioxide or less carbon dioxide if the ha one hamster is running around and right. panting? Right, and then the, there's two in the other one. And there's two in yeah. the other one. So there's a, there's a bunch of variables yep. here that we're trying to... Um, <laughs> wow, look at it. Oh, let's see what the reading is now. So the greatest thing about this device is kids fifth grade through high school can use this, no training, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. instructions. Right. But it's not using a computer probe where you need training. Right. And you need software. So if you want to zoom in on there, you can see the color change indicates the concentration of carbon dioxide. And that's the blue color? Is that what we're that's looking That's the blue at? color. Right, okay. Now, did you predict it would be as high or higher? I don't when he was at rest, I would say for sure lower, but now that he's not, I don't know, I would say a little bit lower maybe. <laughs> but he is going. 
<laughs> He's giving us some good. Uh... His reading is almost as high as the other, wow. just right below it. Wow. Now, if we stood here and talked for 20 minutes mm -hmm. or maybe even five minutes, you would see these carbon dioxide levels continue to increase. So by the end of the day in a classroom right. with 30 bodies exhaling, you have concentrations mm -hmm. in some classrooms where there's not very good ventilation. That's why kids are falling asleep by the end of the day. It's not it's because not we're me. boring. <laughs> it is not because we're boring. Awesome. So, hey. So we just got back from Ecosystems. And this is my friend Jillian. She's also a teacher. And now a teacher. Comes up in Arizona. Yeah. So anyway, hi. Greetings from San Francisco. Thanks. Energy resources, windmill right in here, and other really crazy fun stuff to buy. Yay! Do a little bug shake. Yay! Madagascar Hissine Roach. Yeah, you want to pick him up? Or sure, you yeah, I used to work with him. Here we go. Madagascar Hissine Roach. <laughs> okay. He's hanging out, and I used to work with these at Auburn University. Wow. Okay, wait, 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 wait. And scorpions. Oh, nice. Okay, there you go. Very nice. Thanks. And then you have a millipede? Yeah. Eighth and sixth. Okay. And here is We've got some curriculum and some lesson millipede. plans. There's one lesson plan that's grades 5 through 8. So okay. Great legs. Right 400 to 500 legs. It's not working. Okay. I've wanted these for years, but it's like they always get cut. The Food and Drug Administration has set allowable limits for things like how many <laughs> bugs and bug parts can be in ketchup uh -huh. or chocolate. Mm -hmm. And actually, Reese's piece, peanut butter cups. Mm -hmm have more bugs in them than any of the other candies. Someone actually did a study on that. Oh, really? I yeah. So I always say, is that going to make you stop oh, eating oh, Reese's yeah. peanut butter cups? That was one of my favorites. And I say, I hope not, because mm -hmm. the bugs that are in there are the best part. They have a lot of protein, a lot of vitamins and minerals. So these are samples for us to eat? Yeah, take one. And that's crickets, and that's a cricket chowder, crickets and corn. Mm -hmm. Go for it, girl. Mm. I tried a blue yesterday. Good. I can't really taste him. Mm -hmm. Did you taste it? I have to, I'm just enjoying. She's an observer. Mmm, <laughs> it's not? Mmm. How was it? You can't taste it. Good, thanks. All right. I was in my hotel room and I heard this music and I had to come down to Union Square, right past one of the hearts, and see what the heck was going on. Tibet will be free. Ooh. It's a Tibet thing. This is Union Square. Sax, Tiffany. People and great music. And Macy's and the Cheesecake Factory. Yum. hotel that I'm staying at, the Westin. I'm right in the middle. Eighth floor. Ooh, all those little things blowing our candles on the bottom. The March 10th demonstration in Dharamsala, I guess that was, uh, must have been 89. Uh, it's now been translated into 21 languages. It's recorded in five, including Spanish. Uh, which is the best version. I want to commend our Mexican friends for getting that together. Uh, we're going to have Russian coming out soon. Israeli, uh, the Israelis have a nice Hebrew version out. And uh, I know you all know uh, what to sing on the chorus. It's called Ranzen, Free Tibet. Ranzen!